and welcome to the new music. I'm Lori Brown. And I'm Denise Donlan. And there's a new Talking Heads album available. It's called Naked. I've heard it. I've heard it too, and I love it. Well, you would. Lori Brown is a Talking Heads fanatic. Unfortunately, there's no new video to accompany the album Naked, and so they're not doing any television interviews to support the album. Yet. 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 But the members of the Talking Heads are all engaged in solo projects, and we are making it our personal mission <laughs> to find out what each of them is doing over the next little while. We've caught up with one member of the Talking Heads, but before we get to him, we thought we'd play one of our favorite videos from the Stop Making Sense concert and film. Oh, no. Stop Making Sense is the name of a concert and a film by the Talking Heads. A real high point in their career, what it did was combine the best of a black funk band with the quirky lyrics and movements of David Byrne. Well, any chance to see this band again is a chance worth taking. They were here in Toronto recently backing up Jerry Harrison, the keyboardist from Talking Heads, and they worked closely with him on the recording of his second solo album, Casual Gods. The reason that Jerry wanted to work with them again is that they put the risk back into making music for him. When I was young, I wondered what I'd do. But now a rich man pays the bills. There's very little I want to do. Oh, all the pretty girls dance that never looked my way. But an M16 is a call girl's call. With my shoes, I am okay. Cause I am. First thing that I noticed about your solo album, your second one, Casual Gods, was the cover of the record. These Brazilian men that are digging for gold in these huge cavernous pits, thousands of them just carrying bags of dirt for their whole life up and down these, these mountains. How did, you, how did you decide to use that for a cover? I think in the end when you look at that, it's somehow like not a great thing. But they're in yet at the same time. There is something inspiring about people that they that people that people will work that hard for that hope. Um, I think that um, that in a way those images um, I are are so much stronger, for instance, than um, images these days of like destruction and death. You might say because we've been so inundated with those that something like this is actually much more overwhelming. Uh, I am the, this, the art director and this guy, Tibor Kalman, who's worked with the heads and worked with, uh, did my last album cover. I've known him for years. And I was discussing with him that I wanted something that uh, had the right effect for the name Casual Gods, because I think that you could have an interpretation like gods in leisure suits, kind of sitting around a, a swimming pool, like with glasses, you know, and kind of like, like guys in togas or something like Very that. Very cash. You know, and, uh, and that's not what I wanted. And so I wanted it to have a sort of a serious imagery. And those photos just fit the bill 100%. I mean, they're so amazing. I'm really delighted also by the CD, which has, you know, this 16-page booklet of photos. And I don't think anyone's ever done that. It's like, use that booklet to kind of tell a story other than, like, dopey pictures of the band. Jerry Harrison started his musical career with Jonathan Richman, a cult hero whose childlike, naive quality certainly separates him from the rest of the rock world. But that same naivety can be found in Talking Heads' work and also Jerry's own albums. One tries not to ever lose totally your own innocence. Um, I think it's something that I've worked at in the Talking Heads, because I think that once you lose that, then everything becomes kind of cynical. But um, I think that I've always been trying to challenge myself, I mean, whether it be the groups I play with or the groups I produce. I mean, I, if you look at the groups I've produced, I've really done them just because they were like exciting challenges and really different. I mean, there is nothing that is at all alike between the Violent Femmes and the uh, Fine Young Cannibals or It's Immaterial and the Bodines. I mean, they're really, really different groups. Um, but each one of them, I thought, had something special. And I tried to bring it out in them, and that's what I try to do in myself or when I'm working with Talking Heads, is bring out what's special about each, each individual. How did I get here? Talking Heads were one of the first American bands to be heavily influenced by African music. And nowhere can you hear that influence more than on their latest album, Naked, or Jerry's album, Casual Gods. Got the heat turned on. Africa has provided a new sensibility that a lot of people have picked up on. 
We in Talking Heads, I think, were led there by fellow Ransom Cootie, who was known as the James Brown of Africa. And we were so into James Brown, we thought, well, anyone who's the James Brown of anywhere, I'm going to listen to. <laughs> <laughs> Whether it's a bad cover yeah. band or not. And, uh, and found it just to be great. And that, but of course, you see, African music as an indigenous music to be, in, to be influenced by is actually closer than most others because it is so rhythmic and because it is so, uh, um, you know, kind of, it has that kind of rhythmic vitality that rock and roll and, and particularly rhythm blues and uh, soul music and our, whatever these names you want to give it have been influenced by. Um, there's a, I think that's a little bit uh, um, erroneous, this whole idea of cultural imperialism that people get accused of because they, go, they are influenced or they go work with musicians in another country. Because those musicians in those countries are using that same cultural imperialism listening to English music or rock and roll, uh, you know, or American music or something like that. It just goes both ways. It's just there's, I think it's really good because what's happening is that uh, there is um, like a more of a, you might say, a world music developing and like a, an understanding. I think that's one of the healthier things that ha is happening in popular music. Mm -hmm. To me, the unhealthy things are the fact that it's becoming kind of omnipresent. It's like in the elevators and it's like Nike TV commercials and it's uh, in every movie it's like has another soundtrack and it's like you can't escape it anymore and like any sense of rebellion that it once had is like being kind of squeezed out by how profitable it's become. that what used, used to be and what still makes rock and roll when it's working right exciting is when it has a little bit it has that sense of risk where you really don't know quite what's going to happen where people kind of are you know they're taking all of their talent and all of their um, uh, you know inspiration at that moment and going out there on that limb and it might fall apart or it might be really something great and that's what when it and when, why I don't like a lot of music is when it's so careful. Anyway, that's what I like in music, is I like that sense of risk. It's what I like in art and what I like in people. You know, it's people that are willing to, oh, just take a chance with their lives a little bit.